Hello, my name is Faisal Khan. I'm a banking and a payment consultant. I want to talk to you today about stable coin. It's a concept, we've heard about it, but many people just don't understand it. So I'm going to give you a very simple example to start with. Let's say you go into a bank and you say, go to the cashier and you say, hey, listen, I would like a cashier's check for $100,000. And the cashier says, sure, you know, it'll be $10. It, maybe the bank charges for making you a cashier's check. You already have, they already have your $100,000. They take it out from your account, they place it into this escrow account with the bank, and they issue you a cashier's check. Now, just before issuing you the check, she, the lady asks, what, what name would you like on the check? You say, no, keep it open. She says, no, sir, I can't keep it open. I need a name on the cashier's check. He said, no, it's my money. I'd like it to be open. She goes talk to the manager, comes back, and say, hey, listen, you know, anyone who brings this check in, whatever name they subscribe on it, that's the person that takes the money away. He said, that's fine with me. Anyways, they have your money. They make you sign a few documents just so that they indemnify themselves. And they give you a $100,000 cashier's check with no name on it. Pretty simple, right? Okay. Next day, the guy goes again to the bank and he says, okay, I would like 10 cashier's checks for $10,000 each. And, you know, the lady says, okay, names, etc. He said, no, no name, same thing. So, again, the manager comes in, they make them understand you're issuing 10 checks that are basically open-ended. Anyone who brings them in will be in cash. You say, yeah, that's the, that's the exact thing I want. Anyways, they take your money, they put them into the escrow account, you know, with themselves. They issue you the 10 checks for $10,000 each. Again, pretty simple. Now, third day. You go in again and you say, hi, and she, you know, she smiles, she knows you already. You say, okay, I would like 100,000 cashier checks for $1 each. And she said, uh, yeah, yeah, 100,000 for $1. She said, I, I heard you the first time, 100,000 checks for $1? You say, yep. She says, I don't think so, we can do that. I don't think we even have 100,000 ch physical checks with us, let alone in the county. Um, you know, and they call up the, the manager. The manager says, I'm sorry, I don't understand your request. You want a hundred thousand checks for one dollar each? To which you reply, yes, that's what I want. You know, if I could get a check for a hundred thousand, if I could get a cashier's check for ten thousand, what stops me from getting a check for one dollar? But I just need a hundred thousand of them. And the bank says, we can't physically do it. Even if we were to type one up in two minutes each, 100,000 checks, 24 seven, and without breaking a beat, it's 138 days that you would have to work nonstop. So you see, this is, let's stop and take pause. This is where the problem is. For the $100,000 check, there was no issue. For a $10,000 check, there was no issue. But when you want $1 check, is a huge issue. The problem is the digital dollar that we keep talking about, it is not, it is tethered to the financial system. It's not detethered. You can't have some sort of a token or some sort of a, 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 a small dollar that we can trade. But let's assume, let's assume for, for, for some reason that this bank did have this com awesome computer system in which they went and hit enter and 100,000 checks came out. Well, cool, right? But what if the same thing were to be done in a digital way? Because what you have, this, this piece of you know, paper that says, you know, whoever will present it will get $100,000 or $10,000 or $1 is a digital IOU. The bank already has the money. It's whoever presents the IOU will get the money in return. So I could take that $100,000, I could buy a house from it or a small cabin or something. And the person who takes the cabin could give it to someone else and buy a Tesla for $100,000. That person could take that check and go and buy some, I don't know, computer equipment for $100,000. You see the check can keep going, but whoever takes the check back to the bank and presents it will get the money immediately. The concept of a stable coin is pretty similar. It's a digital IOU. There is money backed somewhere that is representing that digital IOU. Rather than having this physical check go around, we have a digital check. And that digital check is exactly of that amount. So you could say, well, one digital check is $1, like we talked about. So if you tear that check into half, you have two 50 cent checks, always equal to $1. And whoever presents the check back to the bank, it will be cashed out. A similar concept that everyone immediately understands it's a casino chip. 
If you take a casino chip, you have it for $100, for $500, and you can go and play all around in the casino, buy food, etc., etc. But when you take it back to the cashiers, they will cash it out for you. So think of a stable coin as nothing more than a casino chip, except that it's available in all denominations. It can be traded anywhere else in the world. And because there is trust in that chip, because there is trust in that digital IOU, will you be able to you know, make use of it? Will you be able to buy it and trade with it and have the comfort that any time you take it back, it will be in cash. That is what is called the full faith and credit of a system, of a monetary system. The United States dollar is no different. The British pound is no different. The Indian rupee is no different. So that when you take that instrument back to the bank, back to the institution that issued it, the equivalent in that local fiat currency is already offered back to you. So if I had a, let's say, a stable coin that was 10 virtual US dollars and I took it back to the bank, I would get my $10 back. If I had a chip that was 500 British pounds and I traded it, I could call this anything. I could call it Nikon dollars or Canon dollars or, or Apple dollars, uh, where one Nikon dollar or one Canon dollar or one Apple dollar was equal to one you know a US dollar. And if I took the 500 Apple dollars back, I got 500 US dollars back. This and the, the underlying currency could be anything. It could be British pound, could be yen, could be Indian rupees, could be Filipino pesos, could be the Bolivar, whatever you want. It could be a mix of things as long as the person using it has the understanding that if they take this digital IOU back, it will be in cash. So think of it as the casino chip. Think of it as this digital IOU. Think of it as this cashier's check that is being traded all around in the denomination you wish. And you have the confidence that when you take this back to the bank, it will be in cash. So I hope that gives you some form of a semblance. I did a, a detailed article series on how to trade, how digital IOUs are made and how they can be used for trading. Uh, the links are in the description below. This is a blog article I wrote a couple of years back, uh, still very pertinent. Uh, and I think at this point in time, stable coins are pretty hard commodity. They can be used in the same way gold can be used, a gold contract can be used, or a silver contract can be used. I think the game change will happen when the governments come in and they de-tether the dollar and bring it into the digital realm. Then there won't be a need to back that digital dollar with something else because it is already backed by the full faith and credit of the government. And once you can trade the US dollar electronically as an IOU without converting it to something else where the dollar itself is, becomes a digital currency, I think the game change is going to be humongous. Uh, and I think it's not far away that we will be able to see this because once that happens, the ability to take a dollar and ship it across overseas and pay someone in Japan or in Papua New Guinea or in South Africa or in Ethiopia would be instant. And I think the cross-border world of payments will change dramatically. Uh, so that's the power of stable coins or government issued coins when they do come out. So anyways, uh, do read the articles below in the description and as always if you have a question or a comment there's a contact form in the description below please fill it out and I'll be happy to re review it and get back to you. Till next time Faisal Khan signing off.